So I think we are all set and we're all here and the most of the tables are are uh, occupied by the number of people that we think is optimal for good intensive discussions. There is one table here, there are two, two persons, no, three persons who are really knowing each other and I would suggest uh, unless there are um, lots of people coming in. Please come in. It's a it's good space up front here. Don't stand. There's space here. There are two tables that have been reserved for you, and it is uh, free of charge <laughs> for the next 30 seconds. Otherwise, then we start charging for these, these bonus, you know, business class tables up front. So please, there's a table up front here. Don't be shy, there's a table up front here. Two tables. Okay. Uh, great, there are more people coming in. No? Armands, no more? We're fine, so we are set. Uh, so once again, I think you, all of you had thought that, gosh, now we got rid of that moderator after this morning <laughs> session. But you, uh, you, you're unlucky, the otherwise were lucky, you know. They got rid of the moderator. So you will have to bear with me for the next uh, one and a half hours. And this is a very interesting and it will be a very interactive exercise, in fact, uh, the transboundary challenges uh, and the recommendations on how to do that. And if we recall the morning session, uh, several of the speakers, I would, I would say probably all of them, touched on this transboundary challenge. Uh, and I think, who was it? It was uh, Peter from, from the wind sector. You had a vision there that we should all look at the wind farm sector from a Baltic perspective and optimize and find the most optimal use of, of the location, no matter where the national boundaries were, etc. I was going to ask a question, reformulate it during the panel, but the time ran out. So I think we'll probably come back to that because I think it's a very relevant question. Uh, because we are running use, you know, because of the national boundaries in certain sectors, we are running the risk of sub-optimizing the the use of these uh, these resources and how to how to address that. And this session is very much uh, related to that. So this is one part of my introduction. Uh, and so we really have to look at the at the broader view. And you know that the. Um, which we also learned, and I think Ingela will come back to that in a couple of minutes, uh, that this project is really the first one that has been that has been engaging the authorities in in a, in a sort of hands-on learning by doing exercise that you do the planning while you run the project. So it's not a project that produces recommendations for somebody else out there. It produces recommendations for the for the act, the, the actors in the in the project also, but for others as well. Uh, so, uh, uh, and I, I must say, I've been involved in the Baltic and in the MSP, as some of you know, for quite some time, and and I've been following this project, uh, both uh, the 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 pilots that have been done. I've been I have the f the honor to moderate uh, these two sessions on these on these two pilots, and and I must say, I'm impressed by by the headway and the progress that has been made over these uh, two years, Ingela. Nearly two years. It's not ready yet, but nearly two year, years. But it's also um, we have to bear in mind that this is not it's not it's not a unique activity in itself. Some of us know that there have been a lot of lot of projects in the Baltic on MSP, and I'm not going to list them them all because that will not help us very much. But they have, each of them have contributed one way or the other. But there are also some other activities like the. Uh, the Helcom Vasab uh, MSP Working Group, which was established a number of years ago and which is still still kicking. I was going to joke, but at least still up and running. Isn't that right? Uh, there was an extension of the mandate. Okay, so the mandate. So they didn't do a bad job. They got an extension of the mandate. Or they did a bad job, so they, had to, they, would, they couldn't finish it. <laughs> but we'll talk about that just like, later on. But I think the, the Health Convers of MSP Working Group is, is very important because it really sets the principle and policies. The, uh, the Baltic scope is, is more about uh, doing these things on the ground between the authorities. Uh, and again, uh, it, is not, it is not easy to do transboundary 
uh, MSP or any transboundary corporation has their challenges and we all know that there are different legislations, different time schedules, different uh, views. It's nice that we seem to be saying yes, we share the, all the same vision about the Baltic, but if we scratch on the surface, I'm not all that sure that we all share the same the same visions. Uh, and that we'll, we also have to accept that this, I mean, we'll, this is a this is, a, to a great extent, a political process, which means that we have to respect in democracies that that the visions will change over time, be depending on 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 the majority that is uh, that is governing in in the countries. So we have to we have to have that as as a component. So this was a short introduction. One of my one colleague here, Steve Barnard. Who are you? Where are you around? Oh, he left. He said he gave me his piece of paper saying that there is a. A bonus program that has contributed to three main areas about the uh, and if, about uh, application of science to policy development, funding, and engagement. For each area that is being examined, we are interested in whether you have perceived an improvement since the bonus program was introduced and how much you feel that any such change can be attributed to bonus. So contact him at the uh, Steve Barnard somewhere out here if you want to feel you want to answer it. So I've done that. Put that aside, coming back to where we are talking about. And I think my time is up now. And just to set the scene on the Baltic scope, uh, we will ask Ingela to, uh, to uh, with a few slides, get us, get, uh, remind us on what, 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 should, what should have been done and what has been done. Ingela. So thank you. Thank you, Axel. Uh, so yes, my name is Ingela Isaksson, and I work for the Swedish Agency for Marine and Water Management. Uh, and we got the honor, uh, and I got the honor, one and a half a year ago, to actually be the lead partner of Baltic Scope. And of course, I couldn't have done it without uh, my co-manager, Wilhelm Goldmark, who's somewhere here in the room. I know he's over there. So we have together... Uh, been struggling, have had had the opportunity, the great opportunity to actually work with these professionals. Uh, and we started off one half, one and a half year ago. And you have heard uh, at the presentations, you heard about Baltic Scope, but we don't really know what it is. So what I was going to tell you a little bit about the time like the framework of the, of the whole work that we have been doing during one and a half year now, and we have one half more year to go. Okay. So, cross-border issues. That's what we have been dealing with. So, the most important things, and that has been pointed out several times, that it's been the responsible... MSP authorities in the different six countries who have been working very closely together. So the most important things, again, is that we have the mandate to plan. But we are also sovereign nations, so we have to take into consideration also what happens in our own countries. So we have been planning during the time we have also been uh, working and collaboration together, sharing the experiences and sharing the thoughts of how can we actually do it. So having this uh, platform, working together uh, on cross-bounder cross uh, agencies, uh, cross-bounder, uh, sorry, uh, uh, natural agencies, but also together with regional uh, organizations as HELCOM and VASAP, and also with regional uh, uh, research organizations. So I think the mix has been just perfect. So the scene has been just perfect for us. And it was also said in the beginning that this is something to support the actually ongoing process at home in our own countries. To make an added value to what we are actually doing in our countries. And in the long run, to make a difference. So this is the partnership. As you can see, we are lots of different uh, organizations, but the main thing is that it is the natural MSP authorities actually working together for the, actually the first time. And we are, uh, we are funded 
uh, uh, by DJ Mara, together with ourselves uh, helping out with the fund, uh, funding. And as was pointed out early on, uh, we also have some associated partners. It's uh, the uh, Ministry of Environment in Finland, the Ministry of in Infrastructure and Regional Development in mecklenburg vorpommern and also the Ministry of Environment, Republic of Lithuania. And Tina pointed out that, that uh, some of your regional uh, um, colleagues have been uh, attending a couple of meetings to also to gain the experience and, and to gain the exchange the information between each other. But as always, it's people, it's people behind, and it was pointed out by Alejandro, it's people working together and having the opportunity to actually club it and have the informal meetings. And what we have been doing is not only working the national authorities together, we are also in the national responsible authorities for MSP. We also have been working together with the national authorities in charge of the different sectors. So we have decided, we decided very early to, to focus on energy, fishery, environment, and shipping. Those were the four sectors that we actually could make a difference by, by looking upon over the borders on the other side of, of the, the, our own borders and to look upon issues uh, also uh, in, the, in the other countries. So getting to know how do you actually plan these things? How do you actually get, to get around? To get to know what's actually happened on the other side of the border. And as I pointed out, uh, the framework has been like this, that we have had the different countries in charge of the planning issues at home, and then we have had the informal platform where we actually have been doing the collaboration, but at home in our own countries we have been running the, the national uh, process, so we have been part in each other's process, getting to know how it actually works in the other countries. So all the things that we actually have done within the platform, we have taken home to our own countries. And in that way, inspiring and having the sector authorities engaged, as, as Inguna pointed out in the panel. So this has been a way to make an added value to what's actually going on, to make the plans more aligned to each other in the long run. And within this, I think it's very important that we take home this and we are all these countries uh, a part of the, sorry, the last one. Uh, we are all these countries part of the Helcom Vasa MSP working group. So we have also uh, forward, and that's a more formal uh, group between Helcom Vasa uh, MSP working group. It's a more formal group, but still we have been able to, to put in from our own national perspectives, but also to put in information for this group to take further on. So the ones responsible of taking the, the, the outcomes from this project will be, or this collaboration, will be the, own, the countries themselves, but also we hand it over to Halcom Vasab to take it further on. Yes, please. So yes, there have been a lot of, of uh, challenges. We are sovereign nations with domestic targets. And during the time, there have been changing political changes that have made uh, 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 consequences for the project as such. Goals, priorities are different between the countries. We have to take that into consideration. And as, as Jacek pointed out, <coughs> that's, that means that by knowing what actually are the priorities in the different countries, we can also come to different solutions. And we can also uh, point out what kind of solutions do we need to make. Uh, and another challenge, but also a strength, has been that we are on different MSP stages. We are in different places. Germany are making their second plan. Uh, Sweden are just going to launch the first plan. Latvia have launched their plan. So we are on different stages, but we can use that as a strength by, by exchanging uh, each other. And what will be very interesting in the long run, that we haven't really dealt with, is that the, the plans have different legal status. We have a guiding versus an obligatory meeting each other. We don't know what will happen with that, but we are aware of that it's different between the different countries. And as Jacek pointed out, unsolved border issues, and you will hear more of, of that later on. 
So the framework has been, we have had two cases, the Central Baltic and the Southwest Baltic, and you will hear more about that, more into details. Th those have been the core. And then, of course, we have monitoring, evaluation, transboundary. How do we actually indicate that we have made a progress? And the lessons learned, uh, and, and then the communication and dissemination, that's a very important part that we need to, to get the information out, what is actually happening. Next one, please. And we have used a stepwise approach. It's nothing really magic about that, but doing it in a stepwise way getting to know each other, getting to know what's actually the, the background, identify the, the conflicts and synergies, and then inviting the, na uh, the national authorities to actually discuss these things together for the first time. Uh, and then we are now moving on from solution to the conclusion phase. So we are in the, in the last part. So what we would like you to do today is to help us to to think about what the recommendations that we have been doing so far and the work that we have been doing so far, to give us some input. So just, to, yes, and, and then of course you have to kill some darlings. You can't go do all the way. So this is the thing that we are doing now. We need to focus, we need to get, get the, the things do, going. So just to summarize before I, I hand over to Inguna and Thomas, is that it's a cross-border cooperation, it's between the MSP authorities, regional research uh, organization, support the actually ongoing MSP process to make an added value, and we have involved national sector authorities within the work, and Baltiscope has provided during this time a platform for informal discussions, and we hope that we will make a difference. Thank you very much, Ingela. And uh, with, with what Ingela said now means that you're not here just for leisure and recreation or fun. You're here to work and help the project come to come through the conclusion phase. But we're not asking you to go through all the recommendations because then you will miss even the dinner tonight. So we'll ask you, we'll, we'll make a, a selection. We made a selection. But we're really looking forward to your comments and reflections, and we are focusing on the transboundary issues, which Ingela emphasized and which was also coming up in each of, almost each of the, of the morning sessions, and which is one of the most difficult challenges in the, in the MSP, because there are few areas where you do MSP on a, on a strictly national level. Here we have nine countries that are sharing it. We've done this through two, uh, to study areas, one in the southwest and one in the central Baltic, and they have a different approaches, etc. So I'm not going to say more. I'm just saying be prepared and listen extremely carefully what, to what Inguina and Thomas Anderson will be saying now because you will be asked questions in, relate, in relation to what they are saying. And you will be asked to comment on that, and you may be asked, do, do you like it? No, I'm not going to make it that simple but you will be asked to comment on that, so please listen carefully. And they've been asked to be very brief and down to the point. And after they have done their presentations, uh, uh, let's see, where are we now? Uh, where is the program? I lost it now. You will be speaking then on the... The last one. Yeah, on the what Helcom is doing to help. And then before, after that, we'll put up a a slide on th on the screen with a number of recommendations. Those are the ones that you're going to discuss and elaborate on. So you don't have to take notes of all those recommendations that Ingwina and Thomas are presenting, but take mental note of that, please. And then we will get a small panel to comment back on what you've done. So you will do a homework very soon. Before that, uh, we always take Thomas, ladies first, right? Yeah. yeah. So Ingwina. Please, the floor is yours for the next nine and a half minutes. So my name is Ingrid Olsen. I work for the Ministry. Okay. I work for the Ministry of Environment uh, and Regional Development uh, uh, of Latvia, and our department is in charge of maritime spatial planning. We are responsible for the whole process, and. Uh, when we discussed the Baltic Scope project, uh, to, 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 be, to become a participant in the Baltic Scope project, we were really lucky about this proposal which came from the SWOM, 
I remember that the first time Thomas and Ingela came to Latvia and asked us if we are ready, and uh, we considered it a bit and said, yes, we are, because we already started our national process, and we see that it could help us uh, to, to, to move forward. So about the central body case. Central body case brings together Estonia, Latvia, and Sweden, and we are neighbors. We have uh, joint borders. We have a EZ in between. And uh, what is important about this table you see here is that uh, you can see that we are at, you see that uh, at the beginning of the project, Estonia was just in the st at the starting point of MSP, Latvia was somewhere in the middle, and Sweden initiated, um, uh, the, uh, initiated the, the first phase. So, and the, why it's important? Because it, it matters when we started the transboundary cooperation because of these different stages at the, during the project time. And uh, what, 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 is, what was the starting point? It was really difficult because uh, it was really tough to, to, to engage the stakeholders in, uh, in this cross-border process, even if they are aware that they are asked and they are important in the national process, because they, if you can't see your clearly your role and mandate, what should be discussed, how it can go, and what, what will be the outcome of the process, it's really a difficult starting point. And, 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 and the, the moment that we don't have the uh, first drafts of the plans, it was difficult as well. And when we had, after the uh, one year um, of the project, uh, we had a conference in Jurmala and we engaged even more stakeholders to, 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 be, uh, to take part in the, to discuss the, the project, uh, um, project results, we see that how different are those uh, perceptions or, or visions about what is about this uh, transboundary maritime spatial planning. Uh, someone said that it's just simple management about expanding, shrinking, or maintaining interest at the sea. Yes, that's right. That can be true. Then we can see that that um, environmental sector strongly argues that cumulative environmental e effects couldn't be solved within the national country borders. We see that, uh, for instance, this is a peculiarity of for the energy sector that. Uh, uh, all decisions about the deployment of offshore wind parks are only at the coastal zones, and this is probably, at the moment, a very national national problem, not the, the one who we can discuss tra transboundary. And um, for the shipping sector, it was challenging. In general, I, I'm not going to... Uh, to say something bad about the shipping sector, but the, the po starting point was that shipping sector can manage all the situations between the sectors. There is no need for some kind of extra corridors or extra planning or extra proposals to, to safeguard shipping interests at the sea. So that was really uh, the point uh, which was difficult to move on. Okay, but finally we come to the conclusion that if we will have a picture for our uh, sea basin or, or case area, then, then it helps to, 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 to find the solutions to come to discussions. And uh, as Ingela pointed out before, the, the general steps was that we, we gathered together the, the stakeholders for the whole, for four sectors from the national institutions. We engaged the, the uh, scientists and, and experts from outside as well. And uh, what was the attempt? Attempt, attempt was to, to find, to find uh, out if there is a possibility to define planning criteria, criteria which ca we can share among all those three countries and, uh, and try to define how we can move on even if we will not succeed everything during the Baltic Scope project. And here you see those, uh, the way how we, how we uh, organize those discussions. Here you can see that for, for Latvia you see the actual planning proposal for the shipping routes. For the Sweden you see the, the, first, uh, the first attempt to, to, to define the, uh, the sector interests and then for Estonia you see the pilot project results. And what was the intention to do this map? The intention is to discuss if we can define uh, the joint criteria, how we can link those most important routes 
and how we can safeguard them for, for the future because the intentions behind of that nationally are differs. For instance, for Latvia, it was uh, said in the, our national plan that uh, those priority shipping routes are uh, established to to prohibit any construction on those routes, to like to ensure that uh, ship, shipping uh, can be continually uh, uh, con co continue on, on on those directions without any di disturbance. For other countries, probably there are other logic behind of that. There should be various ways how to handle this uh, this issue. But finally, we have agreed that. Uh, there is a need for some kind of guidance of, on classification and we are looking forward to the Baltic Line project what came out of this because this will be then as a parallel discussion which will go more in details about, uh, about this issue. Um, and then for sure we would like uh, to, to say that um, uh, that maritime administrations are the ones who want, who need, who should be very deeply engaged in those discussions because without them we can't decide on anything. And uh, and here we see also that the data exchange is important issue. This is not an issue between the hydrographic services at transnational level, but when it comes to spatial planning, it makes things more difficult. And we have to define what do we need actually uh, for, for the transboundary process. For the energy sector, energy sector was the the most difficult one because besides of BEMIP work group, which is like Baltic energy interconnection group, uh, the, the deployment of offshore wind is, as I told before, is like more or less is uh, for the coastal areas and and uh, the, the very deep Baltic proper, which are in between us, uh, I, I believe will not be suitable for the establishment of offshore wind, that's why. This is a difference between those two cases, South West and uh, Central Baltic. And here there comes the question that these uh, geomorphological conditions are very, very important issue when you are discussing the, the transboundary things. Because they are putting limits on, on it. Because you, you have to be aware where the, the wind velocity is the, the best one, the distance from the harbors, the the, the depths of the sea and so on. And you all know those criteria, general criteria, but yeah, but when it comes to transboundary planning, then we see that uh, uh, even with the, those interconnection uh, uh, planning, is there is the problem because we know that NSOE have their 10 years plans for this is transmission system operators which are putting plans for 10 years and those we are perceived as an existing situation. We, we just put it on a, ta a map and it was easy. But when we start to, to discuss the long term vision that it is, it makes, uh, it was uh, the, the really difficult problem because we didn't manage actually. We saw that there are some proposals which are, uh, uh, you see the, 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 the proposals to, to make uh, future connections from Latvia to Sweden, but uh, from the Sweden side we see there is no <laughs> like answer on, on this question. Yeah. And what we can do about the energy? We, what the general conclusion is that we have to work more closely with the energy sector stakeholders at national and even pan-Baltic level to find out what there are their ambitions and how we can connect those national ambitions with the, the higher ones. Okay, and fisheries sector. The fisheries sector was really exciting because for the fisheries, there is the fish, common fisheries policy and there are a lot of data about the fisheries activities. Only The only thing uh, what is interesting is that every country is doing this uh, mapping of fisheries activities in their own way, even using the same data. So it was, it was really a challenge again. Uh, but what is go good about the fisheries is that it's easy to define the transboundary interests for the fisheries because of this automatic information systems and VMS services. You, we can uh, follow up where the fisheries interests are going and we see that this is not very clear from the map because it's not so easy to read from distance. But here you can see that uh, for the Sweden, you can see that Sweden fish in a Latvian EZ and Latvian um, 
Latvian fishermen fish in Lithuania and Poland, and uh, for sure I know that Estonia fish in our Gulf of Riga. So, and it's really very important to know when you have the, those transboundary discussions, to have this map. It's actually not so difficult to produce it, uh, not at all, but uh, it is really important. Uh, that, that I, I just wanted to show that this transboundary perspective is really important when you're discussing transboundary. And what we can do about this? We have discussed that it could be good to, to establish a closer collab collaboration with the ISIS uh, subgroup sub which works on data and the explanation of the fisheries data because those databases are joint. They have joint standards, they have joint information here and this is the only question is the interpretation of the information. And I, I believe we, should, uh, we can overcome this one. Okay, but about the fisheries, the, the difficult thing is that we can't assign particular areas which are important for the fisheries because, as you can see, over the time the whole sea is important. The, the, the thing is, yeah, how to, how to deal with this issue when you are discussing the cables or you are discussing the construction. And the another part of the fisheries is that we need to take care about the spawning and nursery grounds, otherwise the, the fisheries sector is someone which, uh, where the ecosystem approach is really very essential part and, and the, where there are the connection between the environmental part and, and the fisheries part. For the environment, we had a good experience in cooperating in environmental issues, uh, specifically because of Helcom, because Helcom did a lot to standardize and to, to find out the recommendations and to find out the common approaches, how we can do mapping, how we interpreting the results and, uh, and uh, working with the MSFD directive. And here you just uh, see that it is according, this is classified according to the Helcom criteria. It was quick job, we just, if you have a criteria, and you have data that's not so difficult to, to, to make a, uh, this map which allows you to, to discuss on, on common grounds. But what was the very specific outcome of the environmental group because they dig deeper than others could do and there is the very concrete proposals where we can go and how we can continue our work together uh, to, 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 to get to this common understanding and to to uh, try to implement the ecosystem approach together. <coughs> so you, this is really very, <coughs> this group was very, um, like to say, um, how to say, they were, they were very uh, um, convinced about the next steps which should be taken in order to, to, to get the joint picture for the ecosystem. And finally, I think I'm running out of time, okay. <laughs> I would like to show you this uh, bit complicated picture which are showing the whole, the whole uh, cycle of the project, but the, the most important uh, conclusion is that we, uh, we should have to, to, more, to establish a more close cooperation with the sectorial organizations, not only at home, but also at Pan-Baltic level and uh, EU level, because uh, regarding the data and evidence, they are doing a lot, and we could find the synergies here. So that's the main one. Thank you. Thank you. And there is no room for questions. <laughs> But then we'll invite, but keep in mind what Inguna said, and then we'll invite Thomas. And I think you all got the feeling that it's an impressive work that has been done over these last one and a half, more or less, years uh, in the project, uh, in not the least the conclusions, but also the last picture that you showed. So, Thomas, what have you been doing down there? Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, as you see, I'm Thomas Andersson, also from the Swedish Agency for Marine and Water Management. And I have been uh, <coughs> coordinating the other case in the project. Um, running the risk to repeat a bit what uh, both Ingela and uh, Inguna said, I'm trying to, try to avoid some of it, but I think there was one thing which is important to point out, that the, the outset of the project was never to give a joint plan. It was to support the planning processes in the individual countries, to, to make those plans a bit more coherent, 
So remember, we, we never aim for a joint plan. Uh, there's another thing I also think is very important to point out, and that is that as planners, you, you respond to, to um, a task, an assignment you get from your government or from whoever is giving you the task. And there you also give the frames, the limitations, and, and the options, what you're supposed to do. Like looking at the Swedish instructions, it says that we are going to have good cooperation with our neighbors, but it says nothing about in what uh, subjects. It doesn't say anything that we should come up with joint planning and so on. We should just have good cooperation. And I'm quite convinced it's the same in the other countries. And I think that's, that is important to remember when we're talking about transboundary planning. And sometimes I feel like we have a tendency to, to see that we are going to make a joint plan in the Baltic Sea and so on. Um, so, said that, this is the case area. Sweden, Poland, Denmark and uh, Germany. And, and uh, as a starting point, which was f the same for the whole project more or less, we didn't really know what we were going to do. Even if we were building up on, on previous projects. But now we had a different constellation of, of uh, partners, new people coming in. So, so uh, we, we started off quite f from an empty paper, so to say. And this was some of the first issues we, we uh, re recognized. And I mean, the different governance system is important here. And we also, at an early stage, recognized that we had unsettled border issues and we had different needs in the planning, different perspectives from the different countries. So that, that's what we ta take, take uh, on board as a task. And, and we started it off in quite a classical way, looking at the, what is the situation like, mapping, finding out conflicts, having a lot of discussions about the thematic areas, the four areas both Ingela and, and Inguna mentioned. I will come back to the geographical discussions. Then we had stakeholder meetings, trying to start discussing action solutions or outcomes of the project. And we have documented the process quite well. And we will hear more about that later in the afternoon. But there has been uh, people following the process as such and, and uh, reporting throughout the project. And that, that also makes up, makes up the lessons learned in the end. And now we are at the stage that we try to formulate some recommendations. And they are mainly recommendations for ourselves, but also some for, the, for policy makers. And you have to remember that we are still in the middle of the process of developing MSPs for most of the countries. And, and so this is not really the end. It's at the end of the project, but it's still in the middle of, of the process for, for MSP, and we need to, to continue the work. So, yeah, we had the four, uh, four um, uh, teams, also in our case. And we, at some point, discussed the tourism and agriculture as well, and decided to leave them alone or leave them aside. Most of the agriculture is taking place in the territorial waters. And uh, we somehow had to set the limitation on, on what to discuss. What we also had from the outset is the f it's a slide or a map from up, up right corner there, is that we had a, a look at the economic situation in the case area. So we did, uh, did some work on, on uh, yeah, uh, G G uh, GDPs and uh, where people are living, how much people are living in the different regions. And we also had a look at experiences from land use planning, if there is anything to learn from transboundary land use planning. And that was one of the first issues we, we dealt with. And that was quite interesting because one outcome there was that we don't have so much to pick up from transboundary land use planning. That is mainly based on projects. 
project-based but not comprehensive planning as such. We have a report about that on, on the web, I hope. So, uh, what happened? Yeah. In this case, we focused a lot about the, uh, the geographical areas. And, and we have those shallow banks, actually on the EZ border, quite a few of them. So we try to align the, the thematic discussions about energy and fishing, shipping, and so on to the geographical areas, because this is areas where the different countries' plans will have to meet somehow. So we, we, had, we identified the, the, all of those from the beginning, and then we focused down to the ones with the red circles. And we had this issue about the border between Poland and Denmark, which we heard about. And it's one of the main outcomes that we somehow get that process going to how to solo, solo a, a problem where we don't have a border, but two countries have the task to develop a plan. We also had some other border issues <coughs> in this region, and, and uh, that has also been up on the table. So to look closer to those banks where, especially Krugers Flock, the Mitre, Middle Bank, and Outer Bank, they are all uh, subject for offshore wind power development, nature interest, fishing, sand and gravel. And to find out how, how to continue, we, we did an uh, interest matrix where we tried to list, list the conflicts, the interests, the synergies, and so on. Based on the, the matrix, then we decided, well, this is going to be difficult to agree upon in a bigger meeting. So, so we picked like the southern mid middle bank. We decided, let's have a bi bilateral meeting between Sweden and Poland, since it's between those countries. Krieger's Flock, we had the meeting between Sweden, Denmark, and Germany. And so on, and try to, to look more closely into what, 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 what is the issue, really, when it comes down to the planning. What do we need to take into consideration and so on? And part of that exercise was to put together maps uh, based on, on um, evidence from, from, in this case, Sweden and Poland. And uh, I will not try to explain it, but <laughs> we spent some time going through this and finding out what is the main problem, what could be done, and so on. And um, as a help to do that, we also filled out the matrix. And we used the same same methods in all those bilateral and trilateral meetings to be able to compare, but also to be able to, to keep this and remember two, three, four years down the line. Because, as I said, we are not finishing the MSP plans in the countries. And, and uh, we have to remember what we said. So this documentation is quite important. A lot of people will be changed when we are producing the final version of maps. And here, here is, looking into this, there is some, some uh, identification of, of uh, potential solutions. It's also a remember of that, look into this. We thought about this in this way. Oh. Sorry. So some of the results, I would say, from, from our case, and I think it's somehow cross-border from the cases, is that we have improved the understanding for, uh, for the conditions of planning. And it was mentioned also in the plenary this morning that we do have different governance system. And they set the limitation. They also set the task and what kind of plans we're doing. And that is important to, to have in the back when we're talking about potential solutions. Yeah, the water issue we have mentioned. We also improved the cooperation a lot and opened up between the, the agencies and the nations. And I think, I mean, one, one, uh, one uh, evidence of that is when Poland kicked off their MSP planning a few months ago, they invited all the neighboring countries to, to uh, an open forum and discussed their, their process and also invited to comment in a very early status. And I think that's, I shouldn't say it's only because of Baltic scope, but it's partly building up this trust and openness between the countries. 
And as I said, we have documented the process, coming up with recommendations, and maybe perhaps the most important, all people involved have learned a lot. And that is the base for a good planning back in our own countries. And finally, yeah, transboundary MSP is complicated due to the fact that we, we are living in a, in a world with sovereign states and different interests in the nations. Our parliaments are setting up the visions and, and targets for the, for the planners to, to fulfill. The recommendations we have worked with, I mean, we're still fine-tuning the formulations and so on, they are somehow guided to us policymakers, to the planners, and some of them are very technical. Yeah, the different governance systems I make, uh, mentioned. And the two points there, I think that's also important to remember. We don't have, as planners, we don't have a mandate to solve all the issues. What you can do is to somehow send the issue to the right level. But it's also important to remember for, for stakeholders that the planners are not solving all issues. And then we don't have the mandate to decide about the number of issues. If we take the shipping lines, for example, shipping lines and round, what do you say, TSSs and roundabouts on the sea, they are established on a, an international process. So we, as planners in the region, we can propose a possible change, but we can't decide about them. And the nations, I mean, Sweden can't decide about changing a shipping line alone. So there is issues which are not really in our hands as planners, and that's something to remember, I think. Here's just some examples of recommendations from, from our case. I will not go through them really, but as I said, they are, we have tried to identify who, who should receive them, policymakers, planners, and they are a list of uh, things to remember for ourselves. And we, I think we come back to this discussion about uh, recommendations after the next presentation, but that's, that's what I have to say. I'll stop there. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, and now we have these two presentations, and I think you are really showing both of you in different ways that things are uh, very complicated. Uh, Thomas. I, I just need to add uh, one or two things, actually, which no one of us have mentioned. We also worked, I mean, we somehow tried to, to develop joint methods for certain issues, and, and we have had a work task force working on, on uh, coming up with joint methods for all the countries to use when it comes to a strategic environmental assessment and so on. So we worked on checklists and trying to harmonize ways of uh, doing things. I think that, uh, you know, too much, both you and Ole and Ingina, those who have been working in the projects, they've done a great job uh, trying to solve, identify and solve problems. But sometimes it reminds me when I did my military service and you had a sergeant who said that you know that you think this is easy, but just wait until I've explained it for you. <laughs> not not against you, but I have to tell you another story about Latvia and Sweden because when I was had a report, made my report to the Swedish government on the legislation for the MSP, I was you know very I wasn't humble at all. I said we're going to make it now. This was quite a few years ago. And then I met a former colleague of Inguna in, in Latvia, and I said, you know, Sweden will be before Latvia in introducing legislation on MSP. <laughs> and I bet you, I said, on a bottle of champagne, that will be that. That was uh, one of the bottles of champagne I had to pay for and buy and not taste at all myself. <laughs> it ended up in Latvia. <laughs> but I liked it very much. So. Friends, uh, with this, Manuel Frias will, uh, will highlight uh, what uh, Helcom, I know Helcom is doing a lot. I'm not sure that you're going through all that, but no. what, <laughs> good, thank you. Not. <laughs> but what Helcom is doing to, to uh, help in this process. So yes. Manuel, yes. the floor is yours. So I'm going to talk about data, okay? So this is very concrete now. So Sherlock Holmes said, I can make bricks without clay, and um, I think we all agree that if he were here now, he would say something like, he ca we cannot make MSP without data, even though someone said in the plenary 
that we cannot get uh, all data, maybe, but at least we need some data to make maps, right? And we worked in this project uh, with ve a very specific kind of uh, data. Shipping data. This shipping data, which comes from the Helcom AIS network, so this is all nine contracting parties in the Baltic Sea uh, sharing their shipping data into one single uh, centralized uh, database. So thanks to this, uh, to this network, we have been able to produce this kind of maps that you have already seen. Thomas showed something here. Uh, shipping density maps. So here, I think it's obvious. The darker the color, the more intense the traffic is. So we have delivered, uh, well, not in this project, but we have handled 10 years of data. This Helcom AIS network consists of uh, 10 years of uh, AIS net, uh, data. And uh, we have delivered from different uh, ship types, for example, cargo, tanker. This is just to show you that the patterns are different. You see here. Okay, so we delivered this for some years, for some ship types. And then when we started this project, we thought this is gonna be a piece of cake for us. We know how to make maps. We know how to handle uh, data. We have been, this, uh, have been doing this for years. So this is gonna be easy. But then we saw the shipping data and then we thought, oh my God, this is gonna be difficult it's going to be difficult and uh, very complex. And the reason was, especially one reason. No, not this. This was the wrong. OK, this one, this one. Size matters a lot here. Because when we talk about AIS data, we talk about huge amount of data. Huge. And when I say huge, is huge. One example. Only one year, 2013, contains 1.3 billion rows. Imagine opening a file with 1.3 billion rows in Excel. You cannot do it. We couldn't do it. I remember the first time we saw a file with 1.3 billion rows. We couldn't even see the, the, the data. We couldn't even open the file. But what is 1.3 billion rows? Well, that's 30 million A4 like this, 30 million. So this is, this is a hell of a lot of paper, right? Fortunately, <laughs> we didn't have to print it anything. But what is 30 million pages? So if you take page, like, where is the south here? I think it's here. Okay. So if you take 30 million like this, 30 million like this, and you put it like this, one, two, three, 30 million, OK? will go from here, from this hotel, to <laughs> South Africa. More than 8,000 kilometers paper like this. Can you imagine? OK, but we managed. We managed to do it. So you saw the maps. OK. It took, a, it took us a while. <laughs> but now we can say that thanks to Baltic Scope, what is it? We can share now. 10 years of shipping data, and with this I mean process data, not, not 30 million of pages, but process data to make statistics, to make maps for all the contracted parties. And also, we can save now, this is very important now because we are always talking about synergies. Now we're working in a project uh, called Baltic Lines, and uh, thanks to this project, we have processed this data, so that means that we don't have to work one year and a half processing this data. So this data is already being used in this, uh, in this project. So that's nice, right? Synergy, synergy. So this is a good example of synergy. Oh, I think that's it, because I had another one, but uh, I have a, we have made a tool, which is in our stand. So if you want to have a look, welcome. And if you have a question, just ask me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, will be brief also. We're going to go down to South Africa and see if we find some of your fights. <laughs> <laughs> ran, ran across them.
Oh, sorry, I missed the mic. Yeah, so thank you very much for this presentation. Uh, and I think it's, it shows also that when we talk about data, sometimes we end up with a lot of data, as you said. And uh, we have to process the data, and that's also a learning exercise, to make it meaningful and useful for the, for the planning exercise. Uh, I mean, the AIS data can be used for other purposes also, but here it, you, you've adapted it and made it possible to use in this exercise. So thank you very much for that. Now I have asked, uh, we have asked Ingina and Thomas, uh, out of these uh, lots of recommendations that they have that they have worked with in their two, uh, two areas to boil that down to five recommendations. Okay. And here they are. You want to introduce them just briefly? Yeah. So those, we just squeezed um, our outcome of both cases, uh, like a joint uh, proposal for the recommendations where we are aware that these are important for future transboundary co cooperation and uh, can be used to facilitate the further uh, the MSP process in the Baltic region. So that's why we would like to ask you to, how do you think about them? Which ones are the most important, where you see the most uh, added value of, uh, in terms of uh, cross transboundary cooperation? And if you have an uh, additional or thoughts or you have a comments on them, please be free to discuss this and to make this process easier we have appointed for each table one rapporteur who will report back uh, uh, as outcome from discussion and here therefore i will uh, ask thomas to be one then manuel i see is here ingela will will lead one of the, the those discussions and christine can you show up and wilhelm where i can see the wilhelm and Kai, so I, I will take those this table on the on a corner. So uh, let's uh, let's discuss, and I hope Axel will join at, at one of the tables as well. I will certainly join one to of the tables. To give some input. To the I will discussion. join one of the. Uh, I'm just a question to the organizers about the timing because yeah. we are running, we are running very much behind schedule. Uh, how much time can we do? use some of the lunch time okay so let's let's say not more than 20 minutes otherwise we will not manage not 15? more than not 15. more than 15 minutes 15. you are you are a bunch of very clever experienced people in the MSP okay. so look at those five recommendations you have them in writing ahead of you on the table and try to to sort them and say these are the most important ones um, this is the most important, not the, the most, the most important of all those uh, to uh, further this process and give comments on the other ones. You get 15 minutes to do this, or we got 15 minutes to do that, so please go ahead. Questions on that? No. Crystal clear.
So this uh, European Union bridge system may be quite interesting here. And then the Germans, they are saying that, yeah, we have allocated this one. <laughs> here Sweden can connect if you come in with the And our agencies, they are saying that, are we not doing it that way? 
we find a solution where it's appropriate to do that. We can't take along this under the water. And it's, uh, so we as planners have to somehow stop in that discussion because when we are talking to our stakeholders, they say they are not interested in the German approach. And Germany says, well, that's when we will let our meat come. <laughs> so there is no Thank you. 
what, what your signal is. That should be more outspoken in this way. We should upload a common platform and the speed that we should be created. Well, friends, I hate again to in interrupt uh, good, intelligent, clever, creative discussions, but uh, if I don't do that, you will end up having the afternoon session without a lunch between, and I think you hate that. So could I please get your attention between the tables and uh, a, a quick response from each table, you know, what is most important. And uh, I hope we can do that in a quick way so that we can get some feedback from those who are on the panel also. And I will start with the table here to my right. Who is the rapporteur? We need a microphone here. Yep, good. Thomas, you are the one who to receive it and you're going to report on what you're going to receive. I think you have a... a a bias problem here. Yeah, I have, and as you see, I scratched my head. <laughs> I don't know what to report back. I mean, we had a lively discussion about recommendation two and uh, and the last one, and uh, I understand it as um, yeah. I don't know how to summarize our discussion. Really, could you help me, please? It it. It's not so easy with, with recommendations because they have to be understood also in the context of why they are formulated as they are. So actually we, we spent a lot of time discussing them and I tried to explain the background. But I don't really know if you're, you're prepared to take them home and use them. <laughs> um, just to, to fill that in, I find the discussion extremely interesting. I'm involved with another transboundary and cross-border project and I think some of the recommendations that this project has already developed will be familiar to us in due course. We haven't got to this stage yet, but it's extremely interesting to know the process that you've gone through already and to see the recommendations that you're producing. But my one question was whether this setup had actually affected any changes in individual countries' approaches to marine planning, and the answer didn't appear to be yes. So um, you're all still ploughing ahead with what you were doing. So that's fine. That's a perfectly acceptable outcome. Thank you for those valuable comments. Uh, uh, if I might have one you may. half minute. I was reading through the recommendations from, uh, from another project. I think it's called TTAP or so, Portugal, France, Spain. And it was interesting to see their recommendations because I could buy nine, eight, nine out of ten, so to say, on a general level. But when we discussed our recommendations more based on, on nitty-gritty work, there is, a, there is a different level. It's easy to agree on the general 
level. But but when it comes down to to actually put talking about criteria and so on, it becomes much much more difficult. Okay, Thomas, thank you. I think we move over to the table in the middle, and Manuel, you have, For us have the task to report. Be easy because we played the recommendation Olympics. And the gold medal was for this one. Include analysis of transboundary perspective. And the silver goes to number five. <laughs> okay? And the bronze goes to number one. But they are all important, right? But we had to <laughs> make some filter here. <laughs> and, and thank you very much, thank Manuel. You. I thank you for brief. And there was also a comment and that uh, there, is a, there is a hierarchy here and a structure that has to be established in the project because they are, they are not of the same nature. But uh, we, we used that, mo that model, you know, the gold, silver, and bronze. And you know, Wesley, in the Olympics, if you are number four, you're nothing. <laughs> okay, so the table behind, who is reporting there? Is it John? No, Kai. The floor is yours, Kai. Yes, thanks. Um, just really briefly, the starting point of our discussion um, was your question, uh, which of these are going to have the most impact in the five to ten years from now and which are likely uh, to be forgotten. And um, our discussion focused really on recommendation uh, one and uh, three to a large extent. And we think that if these are applied in the right way, if really they are used to breaking down uh, sectoral barriers and uh, thinking in a transboundary way, um, they may have a lasting impact. Um, and we really considered that number four would then just be an expression of this uh, way of thinking uh, in a transboundary way. Um, so, uh, but I do want to say, make a personal note to what Rona has said and say, uh, <laughs> at least for Germany, I can say that our, I think our approach to the second round of maritime spatial planning uh, certainly changed and there's going to be uh, uh, a better, uh, better focus on transboundary uh, uh, cooperation and uh, certainly uh, gathering data and information from, uh, from our neighbors. So, um, yeah. Thank you, thank you Kai. Uh, in, in my group I, s I now recall that we on the number four we thought it was too many words, no, number five, too many words in it. And to my mind it's like this, you know, if you run into trouble ask your boss to solve the problems, more or less. Uh, the, in the table, yes, I think Ingina, you are the one who will report on that. Okay, our group managed to discuss first two only, <laughs> so uh, uh, that, uh, the, the main conclusion uh, for the first one is that um, NGOs are, and trans international NGOs are looking for their mandate or role within the transboundary process and there was a question if we are uh, asked them to take part in our transboundary consultations and uh, yes I said no <laughs> because we we are limited ourselves to, to sectorial national organizations and that's it but uh, for sure uh, to have a co very comprehensive and good transboundary consultation process we should consider this proposal and the second one is about the data how far we can go with the data sharing and what are the limits and this is endless discussion <laughs> it's like a Pandora box, and uh, I hope uh, very much on those outcomes from the Helcom WhatsApp data group that those will be useful uh, as initial catalog for the data exchange between the countries. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then we have, I think, Willem will be the rapporteur on that group. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, we had a uh, quite intense fast discussions actually, but uh, please help me out if I say something you don't agree with. Uh, we discussed on, on, the, um, on the first one on the planning authorities and uh, one point was, well, we have the SEA uh, already, which does make it, uh, the transparent issues are handled with, uh, in SEA, so perhaps that's already working. Uh, another, another question was on uh, the same one, the first one, and um, here we talk about going sort of via the via the the for example the shipping agency in one country to reach to the international organizations and uh, one question is is uh, is that a good way or should we go more directly should everybody be at the table uh, from the start 
And uh, speaking about consultations we had from the from a, uh, industry or from a, uh, when you want to lay a gas pipe perspective, it's very important to be uh, um, included in an early stage, to have early consultations, and perhaps uh, it's also to uh, make the secure corridors for, for linear infrastructure uh, known, would uh, make it more easy. Uh, Yes, and the consultation is very important, and also the sharing of, of uh, data and may, um, to uh, take your starting point in a common, common understanding of wh where you are and what you have. Thank you, Willem. And next table. Oh, that's right. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, we started uh, uh, with the inspiration that all these presentations and recommendations we have prepared are inspir inspirational for the North Sea, which is actually uh, doing the plans but are not so far in the collaboration. So that was the first thing to start. And so we just start with, not with the recommendations from the paper, but with the um, just uh, reflections from the participants. Uh, we have here also Finland, which is in the very, very uh, beginning of their process, and they really feel that these recommendations will be useful for them in their process, especially when they now see that the transboundary cooperation and regional uh, cooperation, it takes so many time that they will now for sure know that they need some more resources. And um, also, uh, what is very important is the contact points for the exact sectors so that uh, different sectors or different uh, authorities in each country knows where to uh, go to the other country. And uh, of course ecosystem approach needs to be uh, in all of the steps of the planning, but that is a separate work session. And uh, transboundary, the best, the best conclusion, transboundary, easy to write, hard to implement. Yeah. Briefly, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. And now Ingela will be lost from that from the group in the corner. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think the first reflection was that why nar narrow down to only these? And I said this is just part of the list. Yes. Uh, and another reflection was that uh, ecosystem approach was lost in this top priorities. It needs to be there. And we have a special session for that, so I I'm, I'm, I'm hope that you have uh, signed up for that session as well, so because that will be dealt with, we had to narrow it down. Uh, and we, we, d we discussed also that, that we always well, pointed out that this is a recipe for cooperation. Uh, we can see that, but it's also pointing out mainly the process, taking care of those. Uh, the, those part in, in, in the recommendations as has been discussed uh, within, uh, within the work. Uh, and we also uh, concluded that there are lots of work still to be done, of course. And one thing that was specially pointed out was spatial requirements for ecosystem services and primary production, for example. That, that's an important issue that we need to take into consideration. So we moved on from discussing from these taking the conclusion that these are a good recipe for, 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 uh, for uh, uh, cooperation. Uh, but we then moved on to what else do there needs to be done. Uh, and an important thing as well was that, that uh, the main thing is to agree, uh, to agree that we, we do agree. Uh, and we don't have a, a mandate to, to make a joint plan, but we have to uh, to make sure that we organize in a way that, that the plans would uh, align to each other, not next year, but in the coming years to come, so, so lay the foundation to, to, for, for the years uh, to come. And I think that, that's, that's all for us. And I just would like to, to reflect on, on what you said, Rona, there, uh, is that, that I think uh, we have had a couple of, of, uh, of outcomes so far, and, and the most interesting thing I think it is, apart from, from the, the solution, or not the solution yet, but the, the pointing out the, the border issue, has actually been solving the knot a little bit, uh, and pointing out in which direction, uh, but I think another thing is that, that, that really have had the national sectoral authorities thinking outside their own borders and thinking of what 
what consequences will their planning have on the other side of the border? And lifting that, it's a kind of, of, of changing the mindset. And I think that's that's have slowly been started the, that process, and I think that's that's really important. And I, I'm, I'm sure that we have an energy expert over there in that that corner, and I'm, I'm sure that that. Do you agree? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think that that, that that was some examples, but uh, we can talk over dinner. Thank you, Ingela. And with this, before I, oh, Linus, I'm sorry, but. Uh, there is no room for intervention now. Over lunch, you will have to do that. I'm sorry, because before we, I, I allow you to go for lunch and eat, get some good food, uh, before the afternoon session, I would like to invite four of you to stand up here and be a sort of ad hoc small panel. Oh, we don't need a panel. No. Oh, it's all, it's all, Gone. Then we are on schedule. My goodness. <laughs> I thought. I, well, I, I'm happy about that. I think basically, I think what you would have said would have been very intelligent things. But most of it, <laughs> but most of it has been said already. So you would have. And Linus, what is your comment then, as a one-man panel? Thank you, panel, for stepping aside so I can have my reflection. Uh, I. <laughs> <laughs> it's a reflection on the on the first talks that we had here, and when uh, you know you were saying that uh, you were showing a slide where management and MSP question mark if are they related, and then also Thomas, you in the end of your talk you you pointed out that we cannot do everything. Polit politicians uh, have a lot to say, but I think that MSP is really very much management and this is the first time when we have a lot of different sectors that are otherwise regulated in their in, in their each little category is now brought up on the same page on the same map and it's it's really an opportunity to, for us to to um, discuss changes in for instance fisheries and shipping uh, that of course our plans will not we as planners will not decide anything, but the planning is a political process. It's the polit politicians that will sign the plan. So if we can make good plans, then politicians will work to fulfill them over the next decades. And that is a really good opportunity. And in forums like this, like international forums that it happens before the consultation round, we really have the opportunity to to discuss with each other and smoothen the way to make uh, plans that can later be fulfilled and realized by politicians. Thank you very much for these good comments. And the last word before I let you go for lunch is really to say that, uh, you know, um, I have been also in Swedish government, I've been in UN organization, but especially my experience, and all of the experience we have in governments is that the politicians have to, I mean, their task is to solve the difficult issues. They may not do it all the time, but that is their main task, which means that when management, when we are discussing the MSP process between the countries as an expert and we identify this border problem or this uh, whatever problem it is, in the best of worlds, if we at the same time come to our political leaders in Latvia and Sweden and Germany or whatever and say, hey, we've come, we come so far now in our discussions, we need to transfer these issues to you for your discussions. And if that happens simultaneously, more or less, I mean, not by the second, but quite simultaneously, then it can be solved at the political level and they can come back to us and say, hey, yeah, we solved the problem, now is, this is the way forward. That you, and then you can take it on. This is in the best of the beautiful worlds that we can live in. It doesn't work all that, that beautifully, but I think the MSP process gives a much better platform to actually do, this, do these things. Uh, I think it's been an exciting exercise. Uh, I have learned, as I said, when I started this MSP legislative work, I, I under, certainly underestimated the challenges on transboundary work. Uh, but I think we, this Baltic Scope has taken a, a good step forward. Uh, and the more we do it, the more we learn how to do it, the more efficient we can be in it. But, uh, you know, the goal of a 
pan-Baltic MSP plan, I, I'm not sure even if it's a useful goal. The goal is to that we can talk to each other and solve the problem as we work along. I think that's the key. Thank you very much for this, and now I leave you for, for your lunch and for preparing for the next session, which starts at 3 o'clock in whatever room it is. Thank you.